the Declaration of Independence, how libertarian politics can fix what's wrong with America. Also joining us, John Updike, founder and president of Open Primaries, which advocates for primary reform. So, Matt, let me start with you. Look, this is the opportunity for the Libertarian Party. It's been around for about 40 years now. Balanced access in all 50 states. You've got a ticket now of two former governors, two former two-term governors. This is the most on-paper, credible ticket the Libertarians have, have put up. And you've got two mainstream party candidates with record high negative numbers. There is an opportunity for Libertarians. I guess the question is, can they get in those debates this fall? The key right now for them is to get into polls before the debates, because most national polls have not included Gary Johnson so far. It's going to be harder to keep them out of national polls when William Weld is in it, because he gets a lot of media attention and has a bit of credibility. Three of the four polls that I've seen Johnson in, he's gotten at around 10 percent. That's significant. And you, need, you would need 50, basically an average of 15 this fall to be getting into these debates. Correct. So getting polled in the first place gets you in the door. If he gets a bunch of 10s and then gets a little bit of attention and he gets closer to 15s, this starts the cascade of ifs to make all this stuff happen. But even then, the major party candidates could still say, well, I don't want to debate uh, the third party. We don't want to debate each other, so then he wouldn't have to go in. So it's really tough to get there, but there is a way to do it. And, and, and John, what about that? I mean, we, we have had one general election in modern times, 1992, where that third candidate, Ross Perot, got on the stage that year. I mean, if ever there were a recipe for another option to emerge, this is it in 2016. Absolutely. And I think that there's a big challenge for this ticket, which is, and for the Libertarian Party, which is how they're going to sell themselves to the American people. Is the Libertarian Party going to sell the Johnson Weld ticket as an alternative party or an alternative to parties? Because certainly, I think, a big uh, narrative in this campaign has been the broad outcry from the American people to changes to the party system. And that starts with open primaries, that starts with changes to the party rules, and an end to all forms of voter suppression. I think choosing Johnson and Weld is an indicator from the Libertarian Party that they want to tap into that anti-party sentiment in the country. And I think that that means, and, uh, and Matt's right, if they can get to 15 percent and be in the debates, it's going to be a very interesting general. I, I was watching. I, I don't have much of a life, so I spent a lot of yesterday watching C-SPAN and watching this convention. And, and what struck me was we showed that clip and, and you've got some you've got interesting characters who come to a, a gathering like the Libertarian Party convention. But Gary Johnson basically put a challenge to those delegates because a lot of them did not want to vote for Weld yeah. to be the VP. And he basically said, look, this is a test of a maturing party. You've got to go with your head and not your heart here. There's a long time split, the basic split in the Libertarian Party between the kind of radicals and the pragmatists, the purists who want to get the, the best possible message out there in this kind of educational process of a presidential campaign, and those who said, hey, look, we need to have the most uh, attractive and widespread appeal there. The pragmatist won in a route. I mean, if you're watching on C-SPAN and some of the debates, you know, Gary Johnson and William Weld were the two uh, the characters who got booed the loudest during this, right? And, and it was close. Weld for the, the well, VP slot was by about five or six votes. Yeah, think, Gary right? Johnson, uh, he won on the second ballot, but he was not really seriously challenged, and people consider they like him by now. They're familiar with him. But Weld, uh, he joined the Libertarian Party about two weeks ago, sort of dropped in between, uh, dropped at the last minute here. Uh, he has some history in New York with uh, running in the Libertarian party that, that went uh, pear-shaped on him. So there was a lot of antipathy towards him. People went for him out of a desire to help Johnson. He really said, look, you know, I'll, without him, I'm running a marathon on one leg. I can't really do this. Trust me, it will. Uh, we can get into those polls. We can get into those debates with this guy there. And people said, all right, we'll trust you this year because it's a unique opportunity with two not just unfavorable candidates or heavy candidates with heavy unfavorables, but they're both even for within their kind of uh, party traditions, kind of statist from the libertarian point of view. D uh, Donald Trump is a big government authoritarian for a Republican. Hillary Clinton is, I think, uh, to the left of Barack Obama in some ways and just kind of more of a nanny state type of uh, person. So there's an opportunity here. And, and, and John, we, we talk about the libertarians being another option here. Also, Bill Kristol. Republican uh, activist made some news over the weekend, and, and he said, look, there is going to be another credible, he says, credible third party option emerging. He's been talking about trying to get Mitt Romney and maybe Ben Sass, the senator from Nebraska, maybe Tom Coburn, the former senator from Oklahoma. These are the names that have all been floated. They have all said no publicly so far. Do you put anything into what we're hearing from Bill Crystal right now? Well, I don't know. And there's always speculation about the miraculous third party candidate. I think the, the bigger story is that independent voters 
have become a driving force. They've been driving this whole primary process. They've propelled both Trump and Sanders. And I think a tension that's emerged is that both parties, all parties, want the votes of independents come November. And there's going to be a scramble for that. But they're reluctant to give them the recognition, the, um, the respect that they're asking for. And certainly that's why changes to the, the system itself has become such an issue in this campaign. And independent voters have been driving that conversation. Right. And, and ba ballot, a ballot access is for grown-ups, not for people who are making up renegade parties on the internet. It's really tough work because of the system. Well, and, that, and that's the other thing. If this uh, crystal thing does materialize, they've already missed the deadline in Texas. I think they're probably going to miss North Carolina, maybe Illinois. So they will not be 50 states. Like, the libertarians have all 50 states. They will have all 50 states. They will have all 50. Yes. All right. Matt Welsh, John Updike, thank you both for joining us.